Hello everybody. My name is Ravi Kiran and I'm an assistant professor in the department of SNH in Elru College of Engineering and Technology. Today, I would like to discuss the third lesson, Stephen Hawking, Positivity Benchmark. First of all, let us see what is a benchmark. A benchmark is a standard and more so a role model. Let's begin with early life of Stephen Hawking. Stephen William Hawking is his full name and he was born on 8th January 1942 in Oxford, England. His father is a researcher in tropical medicine and he wanted his son Stephen Hawking to seek his career in tropical medicine itself. But Stephen Hawking is more interested in mathematics and physics. Of course, he is not an outstanding student in either St. Albans School or at Oxford University, which he joined in 1959. He was bullied by peers both in classrooms and even on the playing field. At Oxford, he was increasingly interested in physics, that is, the study of both matter and energy. He graduated with first class honors in physics in 1962. Later, he moved on to Cambridge University for his post-graduation, graduate school. Studying at Cambridge is a turning point in his life because he started formal study on cosmology, which focused his study. He was stricken with Lou Gehrig's disease in Cambridge itself, a disease concerning to weakening of both nervous and muscular system and led to total confinement in a wheelchair. But his talents were recognized and the university officials allowed him to continue his, with his studies despite his growing disabilities. He got married in 1965, which is an important step in his emotional life. According to him, Maras gave him the determination to live and make professional progress in the world of science. He got his doctorate in 1969. Thereafter, began lifelong research and teaching association with Cambridge. Research contributions. His first major contribution is the idea of singularity, which has done in collaboration with Sir Roger Pangos, a colleague of him. His continuing observation of nature of black holes led to two important discoveries. The first one is, black holes can give off heat called Hawking's radiation. Of course, it is against the pre-settled theories that nothing can escape black holes. And the second one is regarding or concerning the size of black hole. In 1980, he answered Einstein's unanswered theories, the famous the unified field theory. The unified theory explains the conditions that were present at the beginning of the universe as well as the features of the physical laws of nature. When humans develop the unified theory, they will know the mind of God. That means when they analyze this unified theory, they will come to know the God's planning behind creating this universe, that what is opinion is important publications his ideas expressed in a brief history of time from the big bang to black holes it sold over million copies and listed as the best non-fiction book for over a year in 1993 he wrote black holes and baby universes and other essays apart from the scientific thoughts the book contains chapters of his personal life. In 1996, he co-authored with Sir Roger Penrose a book titled The Nature of Space and Time. In 2007, along with his daughter, he published George's Secret Key to the Universe, a book designed for children to explain theoretical physics in a simple way with characters similar to his family members. The book followed by sequels in 
Despite of decreasing health, he traveled for book releases all around the world. And all the disabled people started looking up to him as a hero. Honors and commitments. His work in cosmology widely recognized and became a member of Royal Society of London in 1974. Five years later, he was named to a professional chair once held by Sir Isaac Newton. He earned honorary degrees, awards, prizes, and lectureship from the major universities and scientific societies of Europe and America. In 2002, following a UK wide war, BBC announced him to be one of the 100 greatest Britons. He received Copley Medal from Royal Society in 2006. He received America's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2009, the Russian Special Fundamental Physics Prize in 2013. He gained popularity and was endorsed with a wireless internet connection to speak to wheelchair-bound youth. Apart from the academic world, he appeared in TV shows including television series Star Trek, The Simpsons, Red Worm, and The Big Bang Theory. His objective, in his own words, is, my goal is a complete understanding of the universe, why it is as it is, and why it exists at all. He expressed this in an interview to Zygon in 1995. The Grand Finale Though struck with a motor neuron disease at the age of 22, defying all the predictions of having a short lifespan, Professor Hawking had a highly intellectual and challenging life till his 76th year. However, he died on 14th March 2018. Soon after his death, tributes poured in. Professor Lord Martin Rees, the Astronomer Royal, a colleague of Professor Hawking, said his friend had amazing willpower and determination. The then Prime Minister Theresa May called him a brilliant and extraordinary mind and one of the great scientists of the generation. The success formula Stephen Hawking thought is. He is an inspiration for revolutionizing physics for half a century. Simply stating that his work and life of success is truly an understatement. We can learn eight lessons from his extraordinary life and achievements that inspire us. Those eight lessons are number one, he used technology to overcome his disability. Number two, he refused to let his disability or his research. Number three, he was always curious. Number four, he had never lost his sense of humor. Number five, he stood by his principles. Number six, he never gave up. Number seven, he valued time as a precious resource. And number eight, he shared his knowledge. These are the eight lessons that we can learn from the life of Sir Stephen Hawking. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you one and all.